Hi, Rinska. <laughs> You're the first person to comment. Hi, Dar. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, guys. Whoop. <laughs> hi, Janet from Australia. Linda. Hi, Linda. Anna. Hey, guys. How's it going? I'm home today. I'm off all week. Uh, I quit my job <laughs> last week, last Friday, on Friday was my last day, um, and I took a week off, and I'm starting my new job on Monday, so kids are back to school, so I've been taking them to school, I'm picking them up. Hi Julie, Melissa, Danny, is it Lada, or yeah, Lada, Leda? Sorry, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce that. From down under. Thanks, Tia. Hey, Juno. Juno, come here. You wanna come here? Come here. Come here, up. Come on, up. <laughs> Here's my boy. Hi, Juno. He's a big boy. Don't bite my finger. Don't bite my hands. That's not very nice. Isn't he big? Do you remember when he was teeny tiny and he could fit in my lap? <laughs> Hi. Are you gonna say anything? You're so big. Oh, I'm getting hair all over me. That's not a good thing. Especially, what? What? He sees himself in the, in the video. <laughs> what? Uh, don't bite me. <laughs> what? What? Hi. Thanks, Crystal. Thanks, Susie. Yeah, he's so big now, guys. Like, no joke. He's huge. Hey, stop. No biting. That's a good boy. Oh, he's heavy. <laughs> South Africa. Cool. Hi, Joy. I know, precious puppy hair. Oh, he's got the hiccups. Has he got the hiccups? He got the hiccups? Such a baby, he is a baby. <laughs> what? I can't, I just had him running around outside in the backyard so that I could tucker him out so that I could pour in peace. Oh, from Honolulu, hi Chris. Juno. <laughs> he's nipping at my fingers. No. Hi. Okay, can you get down now? Oh. Oh. Ow. Okay. Come on, get down. Off. Oh. Look how big he is. Okay, off. Where's your ball? Here. Do you know? I, I'm just gonna go <laughs> get all this hair off of me. Okay. Whew. Okay. That's better. So I have, it's a little hot in here. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, filming live with children and animals. Well, my kids are at school, thank goodness. Um, but geez, this guy, he just wants to play. Dude. <laughs> He's got a strong grip. Come here. You wanna get it? Come on. Okay. Can I have it? Can I have it? Can I have Oh, thank you. Go boy. Okay. All right. Where are we at? Thanks, Carol. Okay. I I'm gonna get started. Um, before I start any pouring a lot. Oh my God, I'm covered in hair. Good thing I'm not pouring right now. Uh, <laughs> thanks Pauline. Hi Barb. Um, okay. So as I was saying, um, before I start pouring, 
Do you know you're gonna go outside, eh? See, I have the door closed because, of course, with my luck, I'm doing a live port, a live today, and there's tree cutting going on outside. This is the same thing that happened to me when I was doing my live auction months ago. I had tree cutting going on. So, anywho, so I am gonna show you guys how to finish off my clock. So. This is my um, 24 inch um, MDF round that I did um, a Dutch pour on and then I sealed it with resin. So I did the Dutch pour and then I drilled the hole in the center. Well, my husband did it for me. So thanks guys. So yeah, my husband drilled, as you can see, the hole in the center. Juno, come on, get out of there. He's being a troublemaker. He's gonna go outside in a sec. So my husband drilled the hole. So note to self. So he drilled the hole um, from the back and punctured through the other side. Don't do that. <laughs> Drill your hole from the front because what happened was um, because of the MDF in the paint, um, when the drill bit came through the other end, um, it actually peeled some of the paint off, which actually is fine. It's not the end of the world because this is gonna cover it anyway, this side. I'm gonna let him out. He's whining to go outside. Hold on, guys. Come here, Juno. Juno. Come on. Fresh air, buddy. Guys, it's so cold here, it's not even funny. Look, I'm in track pants, long sleeve, and I wear my sweater to go out and take him for a walk. That's how cold it is. It's only like 15 degrees or something like that. Anywho, so yeah, um, drill the hole from the front first, um, not from the back, because then at least any extra pieces that come peeling off the MDF will be from the back. So uh, that was my thing that I learned. Okay, and so then um, you saw my video where I did the resin. Thanks, Christina. So I did um, the resin and now, so what I'm gonna do, I kinda already did it, but I'll show you guys again. So when I did the resin, I'm gonna bring this down just a bit. Let me see. There, let's try that. All right, so when I did um, the resin, um, clearly the resin went through the hole. I didn't tape it off, I didn't shove it with anything, cause then if it gets stuck in there, you ain't getting it out, right? Sorry, you guys see a glare, but anywho. So then it doesn't matter if resin gets in the hole because then all you gotta do is just re-drill it. Um, so what I did just before I started the live, I literally took the, um, the drill and I re-drilled from the back this time, um, right through to the front very, very slowly. And it actually um, just crumbled all the uh, excess resin that was in the hole and now it's like perfect. So now you'll see, don't lose that. I can easily put my clock mechanism through just like that, which you can't really see, but. Ugh. All right. I think I'm going to drill it a bit more because that was a little on the tight side. Where are we going? I'm going to resin because I bought a heat gun. Oh, yeah, the heat guns are the best, Barb. 100 degrees? Oh, my God. Yeah, okay, I don't want it to be 100, but I don't want it to be 15 Celsius either. All right, so I'm just going to do a little bit... there just wanted to get a little bit more in there all right okay so what I'm gonna do next that you guys need to see is take off the back so I'm gonna bring you down I'm not using my microphone today because I don't want to be attached to it so I hope you can all hear me very good can you guys all hear me Okay, 
So I have, I clearly taped the back like crazy here. And then I'm going to peel all of this off. Thanks guys, you can hear me just fine, awesome. So I'll peel most of this off. Loud and clear, Pauline. All right. So I've got most of that off, so now I just gotta get the edges. Now I have some fun stuff going on over here, which is all from the resin, which I'm gonna have to pick at later, obviously. Let me get a knife. Let's see, because I've never had that on the back before, probably because I put, because I put tape, or I mean, um, yeah, I put all the newspaper on the back. Oh, what am I doing? You can use a heat gun. So if you ever have resin stuck anywhere and you can't get it off, blast it with the heat gun for a bit and you'll see it'll come right off. So, or at least I hope. that up just trying to do this and read at the same time so see that look at that oh it's hot <laughs> that was hot so yeah just hit it with the heat gun like I mean this has been dry for over a week now and just like that guys boom clean as a whistle so hit it with the heat gun and you're good are you concerned about the hole absorbing moisture over time? With all the moisture where I live, I'd want to seal it. Um, no, there's, like, I mean, there's paint in the hole and um, there's resin in the hole. So the resin actually sealed it. So I'm not worried about that at all because the resin that dripped inside the hole has completely sealed the hole. So I'm not worried about that. All right, so what you want to do next is take your heat gun and go all around the edges just to heat it up. Don't, you don't need to do it too much, but heat around the edges and you'll see the tape will come off nice and easy. bird Carolyn's art all right so I've hit it with the heat gun and I'll show you you can see if I can get an edge there nope I gotta get a good edge <laughs> of course live demonstration okay here we go I was pulling the wrong way all right it's hard to hold a 24 inch board and still stay in camera angle. So maybe I should hit it a little more with the heat gun. Hold on. Pam, can you please tell me why my paint mixes and turns gray? Is it because my paint is too thick? Um, your, your paints for your Dutch pours have to be a very thin consistency, Pam. Um, if you don't know how thin, um, I do have a video where I show um, my ratios on how I mix my paints. It's video number 63, so you can check that out. I've had a lot of people um, go to that video and then message me or email me and say, you know, it worked perfectly fine and now they can do the Dutch pour. So, you know, I don't know, give that a try and see.
guys, I am roasting in here and I want to really open the sliding door for some fresh air, but I'm worried the noise from the tree cutting people across the street is going to drown me out. You see how easily this peels off? So all your resin drips underneath just peel right off with the tape. Just You gotta hit it with the heat gun though or else you're gonna be really messing with it a lot. All right, almost done. end of it how do you know what to sell your paintings for well um, rebut that is um, a good question there's so many factors into that um, it starts with what kind of canvas are you using are you using a level one level three um, gallery wrapped um, what kind of technique did you use did it require a lot of paint how much time did it take you to do it because, um, you know, your time plays a big factor as well. You don't want to work for free, right? Um, also, um, the top coat, is it resin? Is it varnish? How many coats? Like, I mean, there's so many factors, um, you know, that play into what you're going to price your piece at. Um, when I first started um, pouring and selling my pieces, um, I started really low. Um, probably enough just to cover my expenses and stuff like that because I was new and nobody knew who I was. Um, you know, nobody knew what my art was all about. Now that I'm, you know, a little more popular on YouTube, uh, I have raised my prices. So it really depends. Um, what you want to sell your pieces for but always remember to factor in your time though right you don't want to work for free so it's very hard to, to to say what to price your pieces at okay so the back is clean um was it frog tape no it's just tape from the dollar store it's actually just painter's tape um from the dollar store uh hi calf 231 thanks so much Cold outdoors will lift it quicker. Uh, okay, so now I have this uh, clock mechanism. Now, when you're buying a clock mechanism, you really have to make sure you know what the size of the shaft is because um, my brother bought me this um, really big um, clock mechanism with the big clock hands but the um, clock mechanism that came with it was actually like th this much shorter. So it wouldn't fit through my half. This is a half inch board. Um, so if you have a thinner board, it'll work, but I had to go out to Michael's um, and Michael sells these really long ones, which are perfect um, for this, for my half inch. So I'll use the clock mechanism on something else down the road, the other one. Um, but for now, all my pieces that are half inch, um, I get them from Michaels. So you take your clock mechanism. Hi, Dina. Thanks, John. So I put it here now that I've cleaned all the back off. See, went in nice and easily, guys. Really easy. You know what I need? Cups. I need cups. All right, I knew these kids' cups would come in handy one day. All right, cups to put this up. There we go, much better. 
Okay, so I don't know if you can see, but it barely comes up through the top, barely. Just enough where you can see the gold ring. So I'm, I'm really pushing my luck here on this. But as long as I can see the rings, I'm good. So I have decided, I'm gonna open the door. And if you guys hear a lot of noise, let me know and then I'll shut it again. But I need some air in here. Okay, hopefully that's not too loud. And you guys can still hear me pretty good. Hi, Mary. All right, so my clock orientation, um, I'll do it so you guys can see it better. Uh, I'm gonna do it, so for me it's upside down, for you guys it's the right side up. All right. Okay. I'm just gonna wipe it down a bit because I can see I had it upside down on the table. All right. Okay, perfect. All I hear is chainsaws outside, so. <laughs> All right, so I put the clock mechanism through. It comes, I forgot the rubber washer underneath, of course. So I'm gonna take that out. I put the washer in under here. You don't have to use it. Um, it comes with it, so I figure if it comes with it, I might as well use it. Okay, and then you get a little metal washer so put that on top and then you have a nut and you put that in and you screw it on and then you need pliers or these little needle nose i've got these for crafting teeny tiny needle nose pliers so the top of my mechanism is right here because this is six o'clock this is 12 o'clock um, so then I'm straightening it out and then I'm just going to take my little pliers and turn the nut. You don't want to over squeeze it because you might break it, but you want it to be snug enough where the back of the mechanism is not going to move. All right, so that's pretty tight. Next, we have the clock hands. Now, these clock hands had a little bit of an extra tip on the end, um, but these were way too long, so I literally just cut them. So you can cut it, you can even cut it here if you want. It, it's really thin metal. Uh, it comes with a protective plastic coating. So you peel that off, and now they're shiny and black, which is awesome. Okay, and I'll peel this one off. Oh, hi, Joanne! Thanks, Joanne, for joining my channel. I hope you like all my videos. Uh, Karen, the silicone mat, yeah. Um, you guys, I would have it here underneath, um, but it's currently downstairs and there's two massive um, diptychs on it. I did a diptych uh, yesterday for a client and the, the two, there, there are two 20 by 20 inch um, canvases. Um, you'll get to see that video soon, um, but those were huge and the mat is under those. So there was no way I could move that. I wasn't gonna risk moving um, those canvases just to bring the mat upstairs. But the mat is super awesome. I have more on the way um, because I love it so much. So anyways, I put the um, hour hand first and then I put the minute hand on top and then you just screw on the little nut that comes on the top. So just like so. And then what you wanna do is, um, oh gosh, you wanna turn it. Don't never ever ever use the clock hands to move it around. They're so fragile that you'll just bend them. Um, use this to turn it and see if um, the clock hands move freely and easily. Yeah, no problem, dear. Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's my neighbor. He's uh, borrowing some stuff out of our garage, our shed in the back. Sorry about that. So, anyway, what you want to do is you want to turn the clock mechanism 
and make sure they don't touch when they're overlapping. If they are touching, you just need to um, just a little slightly bend it up or bend the other one down. But from what I see here, and you can't, here we go, let's try that. They're moving just fine. So that's pretty much the clock, guys. So you wanna just make sure the back is nice and tight. You just pop in the battery in the back and that is it. So this is a pretty big piece. Um, it's kind of heavy because it's big and it's got a coat of resin. So I'm definitely not going to be hanging it from the little hook back here. I don't think it's strong enough. So I am going to get one of those like wall anchors or hook anchors. I can't remember what they're called. I'm having a brain freeze right now. If anyone knows what I'm talking about, feel free to mention it. Um, and I'm gonna put it across here at the top and then it's gonna hang from here, not from here because um, it's too heavy. But all my smaller clocks, all of them hang from here. So that's it. Like this is really cool. Um, Joanne, by chance, do you ever put a picture on a clock after you do all the paint? Uh, no, I've never done that. Um, I don't know how to do that. Uh, Regina? Is that how you say it from North Carolina? Hi, Tammy. Hi, hello, Margo. Um, yeah, I, I'm sure you could get one of those, um, what do you call it? Those vinyl stickers printed and then slap it on top and then cover it in resin. I don't see why you couldn't do that. It would be a very simple thing. So um, thanks, Danny. Thanks, Chris. So here, let me bring you guys up for a sec because this is all right so here she is with all its glare and glory from the backyard glare from the backyard <laughs> there so there she is guys for those of you who are waiting to see the clock there it is she's finished as some people were asking me oh are you gonna put numbers on it or like little um like lines for three, six, and nine? No. Um, I've done it on other clocks in the past, um, and it's fine for the smaller clocks, but this one just looks way too classy to me to mess it up with um, any sort of lines or ticks or numbers. Like, I mean, this is more of a showpiece, not a, hey, I really need to tell time piece. Um, so it's pretty cool. Let me see if you put it back here on the wall. It's pretty big, it's heavy too. I don't know how heavy it is, but there we go. So, hey Erica. Erica Hughes is in the building. Um, I love it just the way it is too. Um, it's perfect. See, a lot of people doubted it. Well, not a lot, but some people doubted it as a clock. But I, I told you guys, it, it would look cool as a table, but I've done a few tables the size before. So I thought, you know what? And I like the way um, it goes up and down. So you have your 12 o'clock and your six o'clock. So I'm pretty impressed with it. I'm pretty happy. All right, so I'm gonna put this down. Enough with the clock and let's move on. Okay, what shall we do next? Let me see, let's see what's going on here. How many coats of poly did you have to put on it? Um, I don't use poly, I use um, art resin. Let me bring you guys up here. Uh, I use art resin and I only needed one coat. So just top coat, just to flood it. So that's it. Bye Pauline, thanks for joining us. Um, thanks, Erica. Hi, Rita. Hi, Candy. Yeah, for sure. Okay, big fan from Portugal. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, Erica, it's um, video number 97 or 98, I think. One of those two. Um, dude, guess who's crying? He wants in. He wants in. Mommy, let me in. All right, so what do we do next? I think let's uh, 
try a pour. Come on, bud. Come on. Ooh. What's the matter? Ooh. What's the matter? Come here. Come here. What you know? He's like, Mommy, can you play with me? No, not for you. Guys, this is what happens when you're live. There's like interruptions. Am I good? Am I buffering? Because <coughs> Juno, up. Oh. Hi. 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 <coughs> All right. Am I buffering? Because um, my computer has stopped. So let me refresh that. Okay, is that better? We're clear now? Okay. Okay, so let's do, um, okay, here's, here's, let me ask you this, guys. Um, I can do two things. Where are we at? 30 minutes? Okay. I can either do a quick Dutch pour. I'll do like an injection Dutch pour um, using blues. Or a lot of people have asked me how I varnish my painting. So what would you guys like to see? Do you want to see the Dutch pour with an injection or would you like to see me um, varnish a painting or two? Let me know. Uh, where do I get the art resin, Gail? Uh, I ordered it. I order it off Amazon. Uh, does it matter what kind of blow dryer you use? Nope. Um, mine's cheap. I bought it for 10 bucks from Walmart and I used the attachment from my good hair dryer and literally taped it on. Um, all right, so we've got a pour. Where are we at? Hi, Maria. Thanks, Maria. Um, so we have a varnish, we have a pour. Thanks, Lucy. Varnish, injection, Dutch pour, Dutch pour. Yes, please do a Dutch pour, Dutch pour. Uh, I guess we're doing a Dutch pour. <laughs> Sorry, I'll do another video, um, quick video showing you guys how I varnish, um, but I can't do both. We're going to be here forever. Um, so I'll just do a uh, quick Dutch pour. So we'll do that. I've got some really old uh, plastic wrap since I don't have my silicone mat because it's downstairs in the basement. So I'll just put this down for now. Hi, Melissa. Is there a video that shows what you did after the pour? Um, what do you mean what I did after the pour? So after the pour, um, it dries and then I either varnish it or I do a coat of resin on it. It depends. Um, I do have a resin video um, that shows how I resin my pieces. Uh, check it out. I'm not sure what number it is. 104, 103, something like that. All right, so uh, let me grab my stuff over here, my hair dryer. All right, got the hair dryer. See, cheap hair dryer, guys. It's Conair. Um, it's on my Amazon shop. Um, only two settings, high and low. I only ever use it on high. Uh, low is not powerful enough, and there's no heat setting, so there's no hot or cold. It blows hot. So, and then I literally taped the edge on the attachment. Um, <laughs> let's see, where are we at? What kind of varnish, pour, bowl, or spray? Um, I use a Liquitex um, high gloss varnish and I buy it at Michael's. Um, so yeah. All right, I've got a 10 by 10 canvas here. Let me plug in my hair dryer. All right, so let me bring my colors over. All right, injection it is. So I have, now if you saw 
my video, uh, my hair is too tight. Which one was it? The fail that I did. Um, 103, 104, where I tried the pinks and then the white just swallowed up the paint. What? Get off the table. <laughs> get down, get down, get down, get down. Juno, get down. <laughs> he wants to play with the drill. No. He's looking at it like, huh, 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 huh. No, no, no. Let me put this on the counter. <laughs> no, no, you can't play with daddy's drill. Daddy will kill mommy after. So, okay. So what happened was um, the white just swallowed up my paints. No matter how many times I blew the color out, the white would just cover it right back up. So that was because my white paint was way too thick and because I didn't measure it because I was lazy and I eyeballed it like I do usually my white um, and that didn't work out well for me. So, all right, let's move it down. Okay, I think we're good. I got my plastic here. I really wish I had my silicone mat, but I don't because I've got my diptychs drying on it. All right, we can put the heat gun away because we don't need that. All right, let's do this. So we have white in here, which is my Floetrol, um, Artist Loft, Acrylic Flow White and Water. Uh, to watch how I, if you want to know how I mix my paints, check out video number 63. There's a full tutorial there. Colors I'm going to use. Payne's Gray by Pebeo Studio Acrylics. Uh, greenish Blue by Amsterdam. I'm going to use Metallic Cobalt Blue by Artist Loft. Um, and then the other blue is Iridescent Blue Green by Pebeo Studio Acrylics. And then I'm going to throw in a green. I'm going to throw in Thalo Green by Americana. It's been a long time since I've used green, and I really do like that green. Yeah, happy belated birthday to Rinska. Our birthdays, so it was like the end of August and mine is close to the end of September. So my birthday is coming up as well. All right. <laughs> Mary, yeah, he's a funny boy. He's kind of chilling now, which is good. All right, so let's get started. I just shook this, so there's a lot of bubbles in it, but that's fine. Nothing the torch can't fix. Rinska, I loved your video this morning. You really made me laugh. Uh, you had a fail just like I did. I love when you shoved your hands in the paint. That was hilarious on the canvas. That was way too funny. All right. Okay. Now I'm just gonna use, again, my white, same thing that's in this bottle. I'm gonna make sure I get my edges. All right, edge is done. Covered, covered, oops, missed my corner here. Covered. Where's Molly? Where's my Molly? For anyone who's wondering, um, if you know Molly from Molly's Artistry, um, she is in Florida and you know, that Hurricane Dorian guys um, is just insane. Complete destruction and devastation. I can't believe it. Um, Molly is fine guys for those of you wondering um, those of you who follow Molly she is okay um, so thank God for that so it's uh, really sad to see what's been happening and um, you know what happened in the Bahamas like I mean my god it's just all gone I just, I can't believe it. It's just, it's so heartbreaking. 
So thoughts and prayers to everyone in the, you know, Florida, wherever Dorian is. I hope, you know, you're all okay out there. Okay. We did very well through Dorian. I live in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, that's, that's good to hear, Margo. Glad you're okay there. Oh, Rodinska, I just noticed you're a moderator. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so I guess we're doing an injection, which means I have to puddle pour. Usually, I, I've been really enjoying doing um, my squiggly lines, but should I do squiggles or should I do puddles? Hi, Tammy. Squiggles or puddles? I'm kind of changing my mind now. Um... Of course I trust you. You're like my one of my art besties. Okay, so should I do some squiggles or should I do um, a puddle pour and inject it? Squiggles. Okay, we got squiggles, puddles, squiggles, puddles, squiggles. Um, squiggles, puddles. Oh my God, it's like literally back to back. Squiggles, puddles, puddles. <laughs> like it's really even here. Squiggles, pud, squiggle, pud, squiggle, squiggle, puddle, puddle, puddle. Okay, puddle, injection, squiggles. Okay, okay, squiggles, <laughs> puddles. Um, what does injection mean? It means I pour a big puddle and then I take my squeeze bottle and I inject it with paint. So it looks like, oh God, maybe I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> oh shoot. Half puddle, half squiggle. Oh, Rinska, you're making this hard for me. You're not supposed to make it hard. Squiggles, puddles, puddles. Okay, puddle, 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 puddle. I don't, I, I, okay, puddle. <laughs> puddles. All right, let's puddle. Making it fun? Yeah, making it fun, eh, Rinska? Okay, puddles. Here we go, puddles. Puddle. Okay, Payne's gray, there goes the Payne's gray. Let's do the uh, metallic. Did I shake these? I did. Metallic cobalt blue. Ooh, I love that color. Uh, let's do, whoops, greenish blue. Hi, Bonnie. Half and half, Alicia. Ha <laughs> ha, that's funny. Yeah, Bahamas is completely destroyed. It's so, woo, shoot, completely destroyed. It's so sad. You know, I was watching CNN and there was a guy saying that him and his wife were stuck um, on the kitchen cabinets and the kitchen cabinet his wife was on collapsed and she fell in the water and he couldn't save her. Dude, I was crying watching that. He couldn't save his wife. And she drowned. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm, it's just so devastating. Okay, I'm gonna... Hi, Kathy. All right, so I just did my puddle. I'm gonna torch the bubbles. All right, half and half would be cool. I don't know how I would do a half and half. So, I'm not really sure. All right, let's injection complete. I gotta wipe my tip. All right, let's see what happens. Let's blow it out. I know, Alicia, it's horrible, I'm telling you. All right. I love the phthalo green. I do. That is so cool. Where are we at? How long have you been doing acrylic pour pieces? Um, VDG 396. Um, I uploaded my first YouTube video on February 12th. So, and I was just starting out. So I'd say about seven months, maybe. Has it been seven months? 
Um, hi, Amanda, new to your channel. Thank you so much and thanks for joining my channel. Uh, I love these colors too, Kathy. I'm your new neighbor in Alaska. Nice. Uh, Maria from the UK. I can't get the video to play. Sadness. What video? Uh-oh. Did I freeze? No, I'm good. Um, refresh. Um, if you're frozen, um, refresh, Teresa. I did these as a kid, getting bored myself with myself. Missed the injection. Video stopped. Oh, no! Did it, did it stop while I was doing that? I wasn't even paying attention. That would really suck. Well, I basically just took, after I did the puddle pour, guys, I don't know where it stopped. Sorry. Hi, Vaso, Polafia, Apo, Athena. That is my Greek watcher from Athens, Greece. I love it, and I love that she speaks to me in Greek. It's so cool. Um, so anywho, um, yeah, you saw it, Regina. Oh, okay, so did you guys see me inject? Because some people are saying it froze on them. Uh, Nancy, before you focused on Dutch pours, did you experiment with any other techniques in the beginning? I did. I was doing um, flip cups with silicone and all that stuff, and I can't tell you how much I hate it. Um, I couldn't stand it and then Rinska came along and I saw her beautiful paintings and I said That's what I have to do um, And I've been doing it ever since um, I've done tree ring pours, which I also love to do and the kiss pours um, Which was invented and created by Olga Sobi from smart art materials, but those are really the three techniques that I really focus on the most. Um, kiss pour, the tree ring pour, and of course the Dutch pour. Um, those are my favorite. Um, so some people it stopped and other people it didn't. So, ha ha ha, opa, <laughs> that's funny. Um, right as you were in doing the injection, it stopped. So, okay, so for those of you who didn't see it, I had the puddle here. I literally just took the white tip I shoved it under the paint and I squeezed. That's really all it was, guys. So um, I'm sorry that that froze like that. Um, that really sucks. So, but we're good, right? And yeah, I do not use silicone. I hate the stuff with a passion. Um, I can't, can't stand it. So um, that's what I started doing back, back in the day. Um, and that didn't last very long, uh, not long at all. I saw Rinska and I saw her Instagram and I fell in love and that was the end of it. So, and I've been doing it ever since. Hi, Lynn from Montreal. Um, Amanda Hutch, 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 is, Hutch, oh God, I can't even say that and it's so easy. Hudson, oh my God, Amanda Hudson. Um, yeah, I do, I have lots of videos. I have the kiss pour techniques. I have um, a few tree ring pours. I have cloud, cloud effect pours. Um, you're just gonna have to go through all the videos um, and just look at and see what I've got there. Um, what green is that? It is Thalo Green by Americana. Hi from Atlanta. What can be snappy, Carla? They can be kind of snappy. Watch him around the babies. Are you talking about my dog? Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Are you talking about my dog Juno, Carla? Anywho, I'll see what she says, but. So let me bring this up so you guys can see it better. Our Huskies, I have one too. Uh, no, not my Husky. Uh, hold on, so let me show you guys what I've got here. So that is how that ended up. And I'm really loving the phthalo green in there. Guys, I think I'm gonna start using phthalo green more often. It's really cool. I love it. Um, yeah, so uh, Carla, yeah, my pooch has never um, snapped on my kids. Um, if he did, he'd be in some serious doo-doo. Um, but no, he's six months old and 
We've been really lucky. He's been a really good boy. Like, I mean, he growls. He's very sometimes territorial if someone new comes along and, you know, tries to touch his food or take his favorite toy away from him. But to our family, he has never, ever, ever done that. So, um, how much paint do you pre-mix uh, in the squeeze bottles and do they last long that way? Okay, so, um, Hat Creek Candle. I have a video, number 63. Um, that shows you how I mix my paints in here. Full tutorial. Check out video number 63. These paints have been sitting in here like a month or two. No joke. And all I need to do is just shake it. That's all. Like, I mean, they stay pretty good in here. I've had them in here for a real, like this thalo green. I, like I said at the beginning, I haven't used green in like the longest time. Um, it's probably been sitting in here for two months. So they last really long, as long as you keep the tip on and you know, air doesn't get inside. Where are we at? I like phthalo, yeah, me too, Jacqueline. Hi from California, thanks. Um, Narinska, do a live video next time. Uh, Maria Mancini, yes, I am Greek. Thank you, Vaso. <clears throat> I'm too shy. It's a lot of fun, Narinska, I'm telling you, you have a lot of fun. Um, doing a live. It's really cool because you get to talk and interact with everybody, which is actually one of the reasons why I do a live. Um, so I don't know. Let's, uh, I'll bring this down and then I'll bring this back up. There we go. I'm back. Um, I can undo my hair now so it doesn't get in my paint. Okay. So, um, yeah, clean the tips. So, <laughs> thanks, Carla. Carla, are you from the US? Um, anywho, so I, I guess that's it. Like, I mean, it's been 52 minutes. I really enjoy sitting here talking to you guys. Like, I mean, I could sit here for another hour if you want, but you guys might get bored. Like, I mean, this could be a Q&A. You guys can ask me all kinds of questions and now I can actually concentrate on the comments since I'm done pouring, right? Um, but yeah, so. I'm glad I remixed um, all my paints. I actually dumped, well not dumped, but got a big container. I emptied out all my two big bottles. I have about four squeeze bottles like this. I emptied them all out into a really big container. And then I sat there um, cup by cup, um, you know, mixing and adding water to make it to the thin consistency. It should have been um, when I did that pink pour. So, um, that all got fixed luckily. So lesson to me, um, don't be lazy. Um, use the same ratios because if the ratio in here and the consistency in the white is not the same as here, the white is just going to swallow up your colors. At least it does for me. So this was way too thick when I did my pour a couple of days ago and that's why I ended up with a failed Dutch pour. So where are we at? We often say una rata, una fata, Italian and Greek. You know what? That's so true. It's so true in both. Uh, good, do a purple one then. Um, Bonnie, I did two purple ones. Um, you'll see a purple um, Dutch pour, uh, what day is it today? Wednesday on Friday, I'll release one. And then on Sunday, uh, I have a huge diptych um, that I just did last night. There are two um, 20 by 20 inch canvases and a big diptych. Wait, you guys got you guys are gonna love that one. I'm so proud of myself on that one. It turned out so amazing. So to get lacing, you want thick or thin paint. Um, mine was thick and I got crazy lacing. Um, so the white was thicker than my colored paints. Um, where are we at? Just tuning in. Hi, Dale. Ah, oh, thanks, Adinska. You're being a great moderator. <laughs> I'm an Italian Greek. Oh, cool, Jacqueline. So I'm Greek and my husband is Italian. So our kids are a mixed, mixed bunch. But, uh, so... Oh, so Saturday, I'm so excited. No, Sunday, that's a lie, Sunday. I have my very first workshop in my home. 
Now I've done a Michaels class before where I've gone and taught at a Michaels class, but then I thought, you know what? Nah, I'm not doing Michaels anymore. Um, I threw it out there and I had um, so many people want to sign up that I had to do a second date. Um, so I have my first workshop on Sunday. I'm very, very excited. Um, and then the next one is on the 29th of September. So I'm really happy about that. I'm a little nervous too, though. Um, does heat gun work same as flame gun? No, Stephanie. Um, if you want to achieve cells, you need a torch. A heat gun will not work that well for you. Um, it's 20 bucks. Just just go and buy one because the heat gun is not really meant for that. It's more for resin. Um, what makes uh, lacing for cells? Um, my mojo, yo. Uh, it's uh, the Floetrol. I don't use silicone, so Floetrol is um, what makes the uh, cells come out. Um, Claudia, beautiful clock. How much would you charge for a piece like this? Um, so that's 20, it really depends on um, how much you bought your board for, um, what kind of paint and what kind of design you did on it, and then how many coats of resin you've put on it. Um, but that thing there, you're looking at about, and then you got to factor in the clock mechanism as well. Um, you're probably looking at about maybe 300, 400 bucks, somewhere in between there. I haven't really thought about it that much, but somewhere around there. Um, let's see, where are we at? Uh, oh, hi, Stephanie. I just scrolled up and I saw you catching the end, but while well, watch the replay. Um, where do you get your clock mechanisms? Um, for the small ones, I get them at Michael's. Um, the really big one I just had, um, it's very hard to find them on Amazon Canada. Um, Amazon Canada sucks. It really does. Um, so you have to buy them off the U.S. Amazon. But I'm lucky. I have a brother who lives in New York City and visits us often. So when he visits, he brings me all kinds of fun stuff. So the big clock hands um, my brother got for me off Amazon U.S. Um, Patty, it's okay. You can watch the replay. Um, I did my first attempt. I'm really far behind here, guys. Hi, Maria. Thanks. Favorite artist. I'm so happy. Oh, I'm so happy you're, uh, you came across our channels, too. Uh, Bronwyn from Australia. Wish I could fly over. Wouldn't that be cool, eh, Bonnie? How did I advertise my local workshop? Uh, Facebook. You gotta love Facebook, guys. I'm telling you. I literally went on Facebook into my um, community swaps, like the buy and sell swaps for my community. I live here in Innisfil, Barrie area. Um, and I literally posted in like 10 different, and in Marketplace. Um, and then what's it, Face Gigi or whatever. So all this stuff on Facebook. Um, I literally posted and I like in one day I had like over 50 messages. I couldn't even keep up. It was insane. Um, but yeah, Facebook. I didn't even advertise anywhere else. It was all through Facebook. So that's where I got everybody. Um, where are we at now? Hi, Patricia from South Carolina. How thick is the white paint? When my dries, it doesn't always level out. Then your paint is way too thick. Um, yeah, Dale, um, if it's not leveling, then it's way too thick. Check out my video number 63. It tells you the ratios of how I mix my paints. If you're looking for a Dutch pour you know, ratio, that's the ratio you wanna go and check out. That's what works for me. Um, so check out video number 63. Uh, let's see. Canela, have you ever used semi-gloss house paint? No, um, I've never ever used house paint. I know Molly uses it um, and it works really well for her. Um, Molly from Molly's Artistry, another one of my besties. Um, but no, I've never used house paint. Um, maybe I'll try it one day just to experiment with it. But for now, I just, I really like um, uh, my Artist Loft. Where are we at? Uh, at Maria, here to also Olga and Tammy. Oh, uh, yes, I love my girl Tammy Anderson. So I have like some serious gal pals here, okay? So I'm gonna give a shout out to everybody that I love to death and I'm really, really close friends with. So we all know Larinska is my girl um, and Molly from Molly's Artistry. 
Tammy Anderson, you know I love you. She's the funniest girl you've ever talked to. I swear to God, if you've had the pleasure to talk to Tammy Anderson, you will piss your pants, um, excuse the language, but she's hilarious. Um, Olga, my fellow Canadian, you're the best. Um, Stephanie Gagos, uh, you're awesome too. Um, that's all I can think of off the top of my head, but those girls, um, you guys are awesome. Um, Monica Barnes, check her out too. She's a really great resin artist. Um, so yeah, those are my girls. Patricia, South Carolina, where are we? Have the, I'm so far behind. If you guys are bored, like I mean, I can go, but I'm kind of having fun here, you know? Juno's having a dream, he's twitching on the floor. Um, I got nowhere to be, so if you wanna keep at this, no problem. I just gotta keep up with all the messages. No, stay please. Okay, I'm curious about using glue and water. Okay, I did the glue and water thing way back in the day. It's not for me, it really isn't. I know Julie Cuts, um, Karen from Waterfall Acrylics um, uses glue, um, you know, they have their pouring mediums with glue. I tried it once or twice and I, it's just not for me. I could not do it, I did not like it. But then again, they do a lot of the um, um, pouring, flip cup pouring and the dragging and they use silicone and all that stuff. No, not for me, can't do it. I cannot do glue. Um, hi Louise. Yeah, he was in the video earlier. I'll show him to you guys in a bit. Um, he is my baby. Um, thanks Maria. How often do you do these live shows? Not very often. Um, it's very, very hard for me to go live. Um, I can't during the day because I work. I'm only off this week because I'm in between jobs. I quit my old job. I start my new job next week and I'm off all week with the kids. Uh, their first week of school. So I figured I would do a live. Um, doing a live on the weekend is extremely hard. Um, I, I just, I don't, I can't do lives very often, but when I do, it's a treat. <laughs> so I'm vegetating. <laughs> Getting back to painting. My paints are somewhat thick. Kathy, I'm gonna say this again to everybody. Check out my video number 63. So I use these squeeze bottles and I use, they're six ounces. I buy them off Amazon. I put 80 grams of Floetrol, 40 grams of paint, and like 30 grams of water. So two parts Floetrol, one part paint, almost one part water, and my mixture is perfect for my Dutch pours. Um, now, I don't know if you're using it for a tree ring pour or a flip cup or whatever like that. Um, I don't know if it would work with that, but my mixtures are strictly, mainly, for my Dutch pours. I've used them for ring pours and they, they seem to do okay. Um, why don't you like silicone? What does it do? Okay. Silicone is very oily. So when you put it in your paints, then you, and then the paint dries on your canvas, um, there's oily spots everywhere. Um, then you have to sit and clean your canvas. Like you literally have to wash it off. So some people use, oh my God, there's so many different methods that people use. Some people use um, makeup wipes. Other people use Lysol wipes. I, back in the day, used to use Lysol wipes. Um, some people use like cornstarch. They put it all over the painting. They wet it, let it sit there for like a week. I don't even know. Like, I mean, there's so many different methods. But then when you're done cleaning it, when you try to varnish it or put resin on it, if there is any ounce of oil or a speck of oil somewhere on that painting, your resin and your varnish will repel like you, it's like oil and water. So if you throw resin on it and there's a piece, any oil anywhere on it, the resin won't go anywhere near it and you've pretty much ruined your piece. You would have to sit there and now sand the whole piece all over again, throw another coat on top and then it might not work out. So I'm not willing to risk um, ruining a beautiful pour on a canvas um, for silicone. Not gonna happen, not to mention all that extra work um, to clean it off, it's just not my thing. I can't do it. Um, I know Karen from Waterfall Acrylics uses silicone a lot, um, and then she resins a lot of her pieces and they look fantastic. I don't know what she does, or how she does it, or anything like that, to each their own. Not for me, it, it just really isn't. Um, okay, now I gotta go back up, because um, where are we at? 
Carla Jones, shocked to see you go live. I know I'm on. I'm on. Uh, I'm off all week, so. Um, can I use more Floetrol? Um, as opposed to what, Kathy? Was setting for just over a week because of the storm. I need that video number 63 in my life. Yeah, it's video number 63. This is why I number all my videos because they're easy to reference. Um, Grams Parts, hello from Subri. Okay, if you don't know Grams, Google is your friend. Um, just Google if you need to know it in ounces. Just Google grams to ounces and then a little calculator will pop up or grams to whatever it is you need um, and then it'll convert for you if you don't know how to use grams. Um, flow trial is pricey. Oh, any alternatives? Uh, glue. I know people use glue and water. I've never used it myself. Um, I don't want to use it. Um, but if you can't get flow trial at a decent price, um, try glue. Um, oh, Rizka, that would be hilarious. I would like to see you do that. I would like to see you try because, so if you guys watch Rodinska, Rodinska uses paint and water. That's it. Rodinska doesn't use Floetrol, but Rodinska uses really nice, high pigmented, expensive paints because they have great paints out there in Europe. And we have great paints here too, but they're stupendously expensive. Um, and in Canada, they're way more expensive here than they are in the U.S. Like, I mean, you guys in the U.S. Um, with Michaels, your sales are ridiculously great. Um, we do not have those kind of sales here in Canada. So Rinska uses very high expensive pigmented paint, which is why she can get away with um, just water and paint. And that's why her Dutch pores work out phenomenal. Um, I don't use, I use like level one Artist Loft and Liquitex Basics paints. I will one day go and buy like three or four of the really expensive paint just for shits and giggles. Yes, I said that shits and giggles and try it and see how that works out. So I'm going to do that. Um, where are we at? I'm so behind. Um, thanks for the explanation. No problem, Amanda. Is there a specific order of mixing full troll water and then paint? Um, I would add Floetrol first, only because if you add the paint first, it sticks to the bottom of the bottle if it's empty, and then it just sticks to the bottom. Even no matter how much you shake it, there will always be like a layer at the bottom. So I always do um, Floetrol first, then paint, then water. Um, seal it first with a spray gloss. I've done that before where I put a, like a varnish on top, but you know what it's still not worth my time for silicone i just can't do it how long do you store your paint in those bottles i found that they set up too much if i haven't used them in a couple of days a couple of days um nikki this phthalo green that i just used today in my pour has been sitting in here for two months so um they last a really really long time for me so make sure that they're sealed tight no air gets in them they should last you a really really long time um, and it also depends what kind of paint you're using. If you're using cheap craft paint, you know, like the cheaper stuff, maybe that could be the issue as well. Um, I dislike silicone. Erica Hughes, oh my God, girl, I'm so with you. I'm not, like, I love that. I like you even more now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You're great. But yeah, I hate silicone. Um, but I think your blow dryer is a bit stronger. Yeah, it might be a little stronger at Inska, but you never know unless you try. Hello from Australia. Hi, Jade. South Africa. Hi, Louise. I love your blue from Amsterdam. Oh my God. It's my, I gotta go get some more. Um, it's blue green from Amsterdam. It's, I gotta go and get more of that. I'm actually out of it. I have finished my bottle. Um, have you ever considered experimenting with mediums like glazing gel? Um, I did. I did an experiment with GAC 800, GAC 800. It's about four or five videos back I did um, and I used the extreme sheen paints. Um, so I did a side by side. I used Floetrol in one Dutch pour and the GAC 800 in the other one. Um, let's see. Bye Dale. Um, um, Ziploc bags. Not sure what that means. Have you ever got someone in the US to get you supplies and just mail them to you every so often? I do have a special friend who lives in LA and he buys me whatever I need. 
Um, but I try not to do that too often because it does tend to get expensive, especially with shipping. So I just make do with um, what I've got here in Canada. Um, I was in Florida in August, um, but I never got around to hitting a Michaels. Plus, I didn't want to carry all that stuff in my suitcase on the way home. So it is what it is. Oh, Vancouver. Hi, Sharon. Blue green is my favorite. Me too, Steph. Do you have a beginner video? Um, Kristen. Yeah. Um, video number one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Red Violent of Amsterdam is so beautiful too. If you're going to get some, take that one too. Red Violet. Okay, I'm going to keep that in mind, Nadinska. I got to go to a different store. My Michaels doesn't sell Amsterdam paints. Um, for those of you in Canada, you might know the store Curry's, um, C-U-R-R-Y apostrophe S. It's a big art store. Um, that's where I get my Amsterdam paint from because Michaels doesn't sell it. So I'm going to have to make a stop at Curry's and I'll see um, Rinska. I'm going to take you up on that and I'm going to get red violet. I need to, can you text me that Rinska? Because I'm going to forget and I don't have a pen to write it down. Um, text me red violet from Amsterdam. I'm going to go get that. So I, I think that's it guys. Like, I mean, gosh, what are we at? 71 minutes. I hope I didn't bore too many people. Um, I think I should go now. <laughs> I think I should. Uh, no, no Hobby Lobby in Canada. Uh, no Joann's in Canada. Uh, Jerry's Artorama, none of that stuff. We literally, guys, have two stores, Michael's and Curry's. And if I, I can't think of any other ones, so that's it. Um, first time visiting your channel. Thanks, Kristen. I hope you enjoy watching my videos. Um, have you done a really big canvas? Terry, um, the biggest I've done is a 20 by 20 inch. And then yesterday I did a diptych. So it was two 20 by 20 inches. So 20 by 20 and 20 by 20. And I did a massive purple Dutch pour, um, a commissioned piece for a client. Um, you guys are going to see that video in about four days from now. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, so I, the, my, my biggest round was the 24 inch clock that I did at the beginning of this video. I showed you guys the clock and then my biggest canvas to date is a 20 by 20 inch. Uh, Alicia stay. <laughs> um, Desairs has an Amsterdam. We don't have one of those in Canada. Uh, in LA, I'm right down the street. Oh, cool. Bonnie, I'm never boring. Well, some people think I'm boring. You know, some people say I talk a lot. You should see some of the comments that I get on some of my videos. Um, it's just insane. You know, sometimes I look at it and I think I want to, I want to type back and say, you know what, but I try and be nice and I just either delete it or just ignore it and move on. But someone once said to me, literally just commented and said, you talk too much, shut the F up. Yep, that's what someone said to me once. So yeah, I've had a lot of people say, you talk too much, oh my gosh, 12 minutes and you finally started pouring, oh my God, this took forever. But the shut the F up was like the, the top of the cake on that one, so that was really funny. Yeah, I've got some really interesting comments. Um, Red, black, and gray, that might turn a little muddy there, um, Maria, but I don't work with black, um, only because black turns everything to poop. <laughs> I just, um, unless I'm doing a black Dutch pour, um, I don't typically put black in, but you could try it and then let me know how it works out. Um, have you ever done this on fabric? Nope. Um, Walmart. Does Walmart sell Amsterdam paint? I don't think so. I really don't. Uh, I don't know. Where are we at? Yeah, they can find a new channel. Yeah, Sassy Diva. I know it was hilarious. Um, thank you, SM Art. Keep talking. We love you. You know, people like to hear my stories. I think my stories are fascinating and everyone loves Juno. Like, I mean, he's such a clown. You should see him right now. Let me, let me show you. 
Look at him. <laughs> what is he doing? Look at his leg. He's like, I'm just lounging, having a nap with my leg. <laughs> He's so funny. Yeah, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, guys. Thanks, Kathy. Internet bullies, yeah, I know, isn't it great? They're quite comical at times, though, really. Um, all right, I'm gonna end it up soon. Black background with neon. Do you work outside the home? Um, no, not typically, Mary. Do you mean like, do I do art outside the home? Like, do I do sh like sh um, workshops or something outside the home? No, uh, I don't. Um, just found your channel and love it. Thanks, Carrie. Uh, yes, he's very comfortable. Um, can you do red, black, and gold? I will try my best, Jade. Um, I also have convinced myself I can do it. I want to do a pink one for my girl's bedroom decor. Um, yeah, pinks are good too. Pinks and add some purples in there just for contrast. I think that would work really well. Okay, guys. Um, I'm going to end it here. We're at 76 minutes, which is insane. But I got to say, I've had a lot of fun, guys. Um, thanks, Bonnie. I've got... Uh, Two more days off, Thursday and Friday. Um, I'm getting my hair done on Friday. It's been a long time since I've had my hair done, um, but I'm excited. And, and then on Monday, I start my new job. So, anywho, um, that's it, guys. I hope you um, found the clock portion of the video informative. Um, I hope you enjoyed the injection Dutch pour. Um, which here I'll show you for those who tuned in late injection and for those of you who missed the injection part because the camera froze I'm really sorry that sucks um, let's see thanks Maria thanks for sharing your knowledge thanks Carla Yasu my mojo my mojo yo i love that um have an amazing day i'm glad you got to chat yeah thanks guys you guys are the best i have like 120 people watching i kind of don't want to go but i really should go um he probably needs to go for a bathroom break anyway um i missed the clock part yeah guys if you missed any of it because you tuned in late no worries this is going to be uploaded shortly you guys can watch it all again um paris that's so cool I'll pay you guys out so you guys can see the little guy one more time. And then um, I'll sign off. Hi, puppy. Mommy's not going to get paint on you this time. Hi. Hi. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care. It's been fun. <laughs> Hit that like button. And if you're new watching, don't forget to subscribe. And check out all my um, links below, Amazon shops. Brr, I'm an angry dog. <laughs> I just want to lay down like a little blanket. You like my little pillow. <laughs> okay. All right, enough of that nonsense.